Hello everyone and happy Friday! It's the end of week four for Maple Monday, which also means it's the, almost the end of January. And this is your weekly recap, lessons learned and collection of favorites. And this week I have three lessons for you. I actually wrote them down during this review. Um, my first one is to make sure that when you create visualizations that have metrics in there or measurements or whatever you want to call them, measures, that people might not be familiar with. You know, it's not something simple like kilograms, pounds, meters, kilometers, miles. To actually define them, explain them, um, explain what they mean. So what is the unit? In this week we had million tons as a unit in the data set. So it's really helpful to explain what does MT stand for. I actually have to say, I don't know if I did it myself, just thinking back, but I can't recall, I have to check. So make sure to put an explanation in there of what MT stands for so that people understand um, and they can kind of picture it in their head, or maybe not, but at least they know what it means. Um, my second lesson is to be very deliberate about your color choices. You don't actually have to use color in this. It could be black and white, or it could be, you know, just something quite simple, just a, some shades of gray. But when you use color, it should be deliberate. Deliberate in why you use it and what you're using it for, but also what color you're using. I saw visits this week where we had colors to highlight, and that's a great reason to use a color. But to me, pink, green, yellow are not exactly colors that really match the topic of coal mining. So yes, you can draw that contrast and make people pay attention by doing so. But at the same time, you don't want them to wonder, oh, why is this pink when we're talking about coal mines? You want them to think about the information you're presenting. So make sure that if you use a color that doesn't fit your topic, it doesn't actually distract from the topic and from the information you're sharing. And last, but certainly not least, pay attention to labeling titles and subtitles. That is where for me a viz starts and where it can also really fall down. A strong title helps get your audience on the same page as you, helps them understand what you're actually talking about here. And then a subtitle can be really useful in explaining the topic in more detail. And then labels that you use in your viz can guide people, whether it's on a map or in a bar chart or a line chart or whatever you choose. Uh, the labels can really help people understand, oh, why is this really high? Why is this really low? Why is this bubble so small? Why is this bubble so big? So make use of that text option that you have in whatever tool you choose, because it's really going to help everyone understand the data better. Now let's crack on and move over to the favorites. On my list is from Anna. I've <laughs> figured out in, since last week what her name is and or Anastasia and she has created a really cool viz using Tableau and Figma and I really like her style. I love the little arrows that point to specific data points or just to the axes and explain what they mean. I really like how they almost replace a title as well and just how this is a very simple overview of something you know, like this topic of coal production in India. Um, yeah, I really like Anna's style. I think we can learn a lot from her. It's somewhat playful, but still serious enough. And yeah, that's why I'm including this viz this week. Next up, we have Christoph, and uh, he iterated after this review. And I really like the subtle changes he's made. Um, he's updated his text and he's updated his colors. And I just think the layout here really works. We have information on the left, we've got a nice big title, some nice big numbers, a bit of a description and a color legend. And then on the right, we can just focus on the data. We just have our scatter plot and I think it's really neatly done. Then we have Andrew and what I like here is this focus on coal versus lignite coal. coal. And lignite, for those who don't know, is brown coal and it's the lowest grade, so the lowest quality of coal. And what, what I like about this viz is that you can see so clearly that some areas actually, you know, that's, that's what they, um, I don't know, what do you call it? What they produce. Um, so, so you see the orange dots on the left, so in the, in the west and in the south, and then those are repeated, the orange color is repeated on the right side and the other two charts. And I think it pops nicely 
I haven't read the entire story, but I like how this is being put together. I like the cleanliness, but I also like that I do have some labels and this is where it shows that they are important. So on the, in the bar chart, you see you have a label for each bar, which means you don't need an access. But if you didn't have the labels, you wouldn't know anything about this data. And then in the scatter plot at the bottom, you see people employed versus production in tons, which is probably million tons, I would have thought. Um, but again, we have labels on the axis, so we know what's going on. And I think this is a really neat vis that gives a nice little overview. And then we have Brendan Cornell and he made some updates as well. What I like is the kind of almost like an infographic approach where we have a chart that's clearly a chart. Uh, we have a map and I think in this case the maps really work for this data set and they draw people's attention because I've never met anyone who didn't like looking at a map, uh, especially since maps have become digital and very interactive and you know very user friendly. So I like his approach of providing some text, providing you know some big stats, a nice big map that shows us where the mines are, but also how big the production production capacity is. Um, so that's really well done. And then we have Ina Jacobs Dottir. I hope I pronounced that correctly. And what I love about her map in particular is these big numbers in the middle. So rather than having every single uh, coal mine listed. She has done a single circle for each of the states or regions and within that she lists how many coal mines there are, which I think is a really neat approach because this is something a general audience could probably understand really, really quickly because people have seen these kind of maps before. And that's also something to keep in mind. What will actually help the audience understand this? And I think Ina did a great job. And then we have Kevin Kumar. And what I really, really like is that this teaches me something about coal and lignite production. It really does. So first we're looking at the producing states and districts um, of coal and lignite. So there's again the two different, uh, different types of coal. And then he explained the different mine types. And not only that, but he's also showed how many of the mines fall into each category and what are they, you know, so you can hover over these different dots and find out more. And I just think this is a really cool way of showing the data. And I really like the design approach he's taken. And last, but as I always say, certainly not least, we have Lin. And Lin has produced this, what I would call again, an infographic. It's a really neat overview. It's probably a bit small on your screens, but I do encourage everyone to check out the links that are in the description on YouTube under this video and have a look at the links to the interactive versions of these visualizations. And Lin has you know, created a story that really tells you more about coal production and how it's impacted by demand and you know, what else kind of plays into it. And then there are little maps that actually support the story points that she makes. And I think this is a really cool approach. Again, it's very educational, informative, and I really like it. And that brings us to the end of the recap for this week. I hope you enjoyed the week. I hope you had a good time playing with this data and joining this review. Next week, we are kicking off into February and from February onwards, for the month of February, Marion Ahrens is gonna join me for this review. So I hope you'll be back next week for a new data set, new visualization challenge. It's gonna be an interesting data set. And, um, and also then for this review, of course, on Wednesday. So make sure to put that in your calendars I'm going to have the links out for all of those upcoming Viz reviews shortly and enjoy your weekend. Take some time off. I hope you're all safe and you stay safe and healthy and we'll see you again soon. Bye bye.